My movie thing. Yay! Michael Clayton. You'll see a lot of people these days going on about George Clooney. Oh, he's such a good actor! Ooh, George Clooney is the king of cool! There's a perfectly logical explanation for that, and that is that he bloody well is. Put it simply, this is a crime thriller in the vein of Breach. But it has a few things Breach doesn't have. Wit, style, George Clooney, and apparently a cameo by Elmer Fudd. If you're still not entirely convinced by George Clooney's acting talent, just sit through the beginning of the end credits for this film. You'll definitely see what I mean. Oh, and don't bother googling Realm of Conquest, because that book does not exist, sadly. I tried to find it, but... For some reason, Amazon doesn't stock books that don't exist. Two eyebrows. Stardust. Let's get one thing clear. This is not Lord of the Rings. It's more like a British Dungeons and Dragons. No, 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 don't go. What I mean is that it, does, it doesn't take itself too seriously, which is a good thing, but I feel that sometimes it could have done with taking itself a bit more seriously. For example, the whole Captain Shakespeare thing is way over the top for me. Why did I have to change his name anyway? Captain Shakespeare? Come on. They've handled the plot all right, but as is usually the case in these adaptations, they've made the character relationships too obvious. But it's entertaining and it's well cast, so it's a strong single brow from me. The Counterfeiters, or Dear Felcher. Felcher. Something. You kind of think that at some point they'll run out of stories about the Second World War. But here you have The Counterfeiters, based on a true story. Everything in this film is really well done. All the way from cinematography to just costume design. Nothing in this film feels coincidental. The cast is without fail fantastic, especially Karl Markovics as the king of counterfeiters himself. His on-screen presence is distant and yet intense at the same time, and you can't help but feel drawn in to his world and his story. This is the second film I'm going to give Orgasmic Joy! Razzle Dazzle I had no idea what this film was going to be about. I didn't even know it was Australian. So this film really surprised me. I'm a big fan of films like Spinal Tap, and this apple doesn't fall far from the tree. The characters are at once stereotypical and realistic, and you end up caring about them, and you really want them to do well in the end. The end, by the way, is difficult to predict because, you know, this is one of those unpredictable films where you kind of just go, I wonder how this is actually going to end. This is a somewhat scary and hilarious look into the world of competitive child ballet. And I'm gonna give it two brows. The Kingdom. Despite what the posters might make you think, this is not an action movie. All in all, there's like 15 minutes of action near the end of it. And the rest is an interesting look into the paranoia of a post 9-11 world. And the differences between the Western and Middle Eastern cultures. But it's also underlining the basic humanity that binds us together. My two main problems with this film is that, one, the action is much too heroic. And by that I mean that the enemy can't shoot for shit. And all the heroes, they just pop them down like flies. And also, the second thing is, STAND STILL WITH THE FUCKING CAMERA, YOU MORON! One brow. Put it simply, this is a crime thr- Put it simply, this is a crime thr- Put it simply, this is a crime thriller in the br- uh, Put it simply, this is a- Put it simply, this is a crime thriller in the- You just saw me in a t-shirt from my cafe press store! As used by myself, Paper Lilies, Geofraxia, and Nonny Gold. www.cafepress.com, Magnus.